Hey, what is up guys? In today's video, we're going to be doing a mailbag time and uh, let's just get started. So first things first, I got a Furious FPV 2.4 gigahertz combo. This comes with the Fat Shark module as well as the VTX and it's 800 milliwatt 2.4 gigahertz VTX. So I am going to be doing uh, long range testing. So I also picked up the, I do have the TBS Crossfire and I did pick up the R9 Micro, uh, R9M, sorry. <laughs> Uh, the the FR Sky R9M module because I really wanted to do the long range testing. So currently I'm practicing on flying wings, and I'm going to be installing or preparing a bigger wing that can go longer range. And I haven't seen this guy, so let's just see him together. So this is both. This comes together as a kit. They don't provide the antennas, but what you do get is you get 2.4 gigahertz uh, Fat Shark module here, and you also get a 2.4 gigahertz VTX here, which is really good to see. So I really want to see this. They also even provide the little adapter thingies here, which is really nice. So what else does it have? That's it. Looks really good, actually. It looks really nice. So uh, we're going to be testing this in the field very soon. Maybe we'll do a quick test on the field with a drone first. So let's open the VTX here. So they also provide us with these here, and I think these will go for our quadcopters. All right, so let's take a look at the VTX here. This thing is uh, is pretty massive, and uh, it's not that massive, but it's bigger than most VTXs of this nature here. Um, so it's gonna be pretty interesting, this one, I would say. It looks like it's really good build quality, but that's all I can currently say. So this is a 800 milliwatt, 2.4 gigahertz VTX, which is pretty crazy. All right, so basically this kit comes with the wires, uh, two SMA connectors here of some sort. Yeah, both of them. Yeah, one is a 90 degree angle and one's a straight angle. And then we get the VTX. We're gonna leave this for the review and 800 milliwatt, 2.4 gigahertz long range uh, VTX here. So this is gonna be pretty interesting. I have no idea how well this is gonna perform. So uh, I'll pick up some 800 milliwatt, 5.8 gigahertz VTX. I could run them at the same time basically and see how far I can go because I'm running TBS Crossfire at uh, 800 and something megahertz because I'm in the EU. So this will be pretty interesting. We'll see how well this is going to handle. So that's one thing I got. Let's actually put it back in the bag here. All right, so if you've noticed, we don't have any antennas for the for the 2.4 gigahertz, and obviously it's going to use different antennas here. And uh, I picked up these. I picked up two of these, actually. This is a package from Furious FPV. What they provide you, they're pretty big, too. Provide you with two antennas. They give you a cloverleaf antenna, just like this one here which is really nice and they also give us a directional antenna so these are for 2.4 gigahertz as you can tell right here that's where you're supposed to be up I guess so yeah I picked up two packs of these because one of them is obviously going to go on the fat truck module and then in the other pack one the the cloverleaf antenna here is going to go to the flying wing that's going to be used for uh, range testing so I do have a GPS set up and I'm bring, I'm planning on using something very reliable and it, from a company that I trust and it's Maytek I'm gonna get that new Maytek Maytek basically released a new flight controller for flying wings specifically made for wings which is really nice and uh, hopefully I'll be getting two of those so I can build two planes alright so what else did we get well I picked this up these are programmers for the AT Megas and also I picked up one for the there we go the STM32 the ST link v2 I picked up one of these why would I pick up one of these well because there's a firmware we can flash that cleric's been working on on the FR sky receivers to enable RSSI in one of the channels which is really nice and uh, we're going to be testing that. That's why I also did that. Because uh, long range testing, we're going to be testing. I'm going to be testing Fly Sky, FR Sky, hopefully Fatabo if I get my hands on those later on. But first, I still have plenty. And if I have the Fly Sky ones, Fly Sky i6X, Fly Sky i6, uh, Turnigy Evolution, uh, the Nirvana's on its way, a QX7S, Horus X10, and uh, some other multi protocol transmitters that I have. And. Um, I really want to test the range and you know we might be surprised with some of these results so that's going to be pretty interesting all right so let's put this to the side now so these are the programmers i'll leave everything linked down below so you can go and check those out i just don't want to mess this up here all right so the 18 mega programmers here they come in a pack of four i have no idea why so i picked up four of these so maybe i'll give them out to my some of my patrons if they want some I picked up four of these. Now you might say, what the heck are these? Well, these are ESP32s. This is a module, it's kind of like an Arduino in a way. So this is like a, this is a module that's dual core. It has Bluetooth and it has Wi-Fi, which is pretty damn crazy. And it's Bluetooth. And it could run on a coin cell. 
So if you kind of get an idea of where I'm going with this, maybe not, maybe yeah. I do have some future projects with this. Do some crazy things with drone finding. So I have a couple ideas. I'm, I'm designing a breakout board for this and, and we'll get into that later on. So I picked up four of these just in case because I usually have a habit of burning two of everything. So I picked up four. That'll leave me with two here. These, are, these aren't that expensive. And uh, usually, the, you know, I have a I have a Game Boy emulator that's on its way. It's using one of these guys, and we're gonna. It's a DIY kit. It's pretty sick. So once it arrives and I build it and then uh, test it out, if it's really good, I'm gonna make a video on it because I'm really I can't wait for that one to arrive. So we got this thing also. Also, uh, for about the camera drone, I finally got my gimbal to work. So here's the Tarot gimbal. It's a really nice gimbal here. Um, Oh, let me just set this up correctly there we go and check this out this is this is really awesome um, this gimbal is absolutely phenomenal to be honest I was testing it I was bashing it a little in I mean just here on on the on basically the table I'm gonna show you a complete there's really no video online to show you how to use these which is uh, kind of a shame <clears throat> So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to boot up my Horus. So yeah, this gimbal is pretty damn awesome here, as you can tell. Oh my goodness. I've been having so much fun with it. It's using iBus right now. I'm controlling it with my Horus. And um, it's just phenomenal, really. Look at this. It's really solid. I thought it was a piece of crap when I first got it because I was booting it with no camera on board. And it was just always jittering and I just didn't know what the, what the issue was. But holy crap, I, I walked around the shop with this and I shook the living crap out of it and it was recording very good. And by the way, this camera here is absolutely insane. This is the Firefly 8S. And I also got the Firefly 8SE as I remember, uh, which is, we're going to see it right now. So I've been using this, but the reason why I haven't released a video just yet for this is because... Um, I want to make a proper review for cameras and I have a bunch more cameras coming. So I'm building a platform, 3D design, 3D printed and everything uh, for these cameras on drones. Hopefully I'm going to get them on drones, but so drones such as this right here. And I also got the SE version. Now this is the Firefly 8S. The SE has a touch screen, but uh, yeah, I'll leave a link. The really good cameras, like really insanely good. Like I, I, I can't believe how good they are. They're like a hundred bucks here and they come with a trillion things and they do have a nice little... Uh, screen in the back but the S is not touch screen but the SE is and let's just take a look at the SE here they're really really good cameras actually I was surprised they can record up to 120 frames a second up to 4k they come with a lot of things so this is the SE this is the more a little bit I think a little bit more expensive this has a touch screen I haven't even opened it yet so this is the first day opening it so they look alike however um, they do have some different specs here so we're just going to boot this guy up I'm curious about the touch screen. I don't know how to use it yet. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's pretty responsive, I would say. So if we take a look, this is the SE. Hopefully you guys can see that. So let's see. I don't know to what maximum we could take. So you could take 4K 30 frames a second, 4K 25, and uh, I don't know, 216p, 2.7K. There we go. And then we have, I think this is a 2K would be considered. So you can take 1080p, 120 frames a second, which is pretty nice. But usually I set everything to 1080p, 60 frames a second, because that's what I record in. And um, this thing is just awesome. It has a lot of features also. So let's go ahead into the settings here. Auto image rotate distortion. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, uh, just a bunch of things. It's it's really nice little piece of uh, the touch. Actually, I like this touch a little bit more, but I don't know how this is. Uh, so TV mode here is because you can set up an output so it does have a mini HDMI output and you can also get a what is it called a, a analog video output here and that's why it's having you choose between NTSC and PAL so when you do that but the thing is they don't provide that wire so I need to find it and what you can also do with this is set it up with a PWM uh, channel to record stop recording and take pictures which is really nice especially with the gimbal so I'm gonna figure out a way to set these guys up and um the, the, the quality, really, the recording quality on these is really nice. Like, really, really nice. Um, so, I need to f first create an adapter for one of my just basic drones, stick them on there and fly them. But to be honest, I'm really afraid of breaking this. Um, because it's, it, they're really nice, actually. Uh, I just can't explain it. But obviously, you'll get to see that as the day comes. Right now, that's all I can currently just tell you. But don't go by my word. Go by what you see. So, once we test it, then you can decide for yourself. 
they come with so many things it's crazy here for a hundred dollars they provide a lot of things hopefully this one has that wire because i really wanted that wire what it has a microphone that's crazy so they provide you with a microphone on this one this is the se version let's see what else do we have we just have a bunch of i'm just looking for that wire i'm hoping it does have that wire come on mr wire nope you're gonna have to buy that separately so it's basically a micro USB or a mini USB to uh, basically a video output. And um, yeah, that's what we're going to be using to probably pipe to a VTX. We're going to have latency, but that, you know, this is not really racing. And uh, so we can just see what the quad is seeing with the, with the gimbal. So it's going to be pretty interesting here. So this is really nice. And I got a couple more other things that I don't know if I should show you. You guys would be interested in them. I got a bunch of uh, uh, LDO regulators, like little tiny SMD regulators. I got a bunch of Atmel CP, uh, microcontroller units, basically from Mauser. I went shopping and I got a bunch of things for a bunch of new projects, tantalum capacitors, all these kinds of things. So I have a couple ideas that I'm working on in the background. And uh, you know what? Let me just go bring the box. So let's take a look what I got here. All right. I picked up some USB, if you can see those, those are USB, so those are nice. Picked up a bunch of SMA and RPSMA uh, pads here. Which one is this one? This is the Atmega, um, this is the Atmega microcontroller units. They come in here, so what else do we get? These are 800 milliamp LDO linear voltage regulators. This is the three point, this is a five volt, so I got some of those. I got different kinds to test out. Uh, I got these. These are really nice. These are the LCDs here. This this wasn't from Mauser. This was from Banggood. So these are a lot smaller. LC They're the same size LCD, but the footprint is a lot smaller. So I really like these. I got them from Banggood. I'll even link down below. And what else did we get here? We got I got a bunch of things here. Here I got some. Let's see. Also, 3.3 volt linear voltage regulators. If you take a look here, they're really tiny. They're SMD components, and they're really nice. I can replace here some tantalum capacitors. Yeah, maybe you'll feel, look at this side. You'll know how the side looks like. See, as you can tell, I got some tantalum capacitors here. See, this is the back side, the bottom side. This is the top side. We usually see more tantalum capacitors, different sizes basically. Uh, I got some knobs for potentiometers. These are really nice. We'll see those in an upcoming video. And what else did we get here? Uh, just a bunch of stuff here, really. So we'll see these in later future projects. We got some uh, crystal, uh, what are they? Crystal oscillators here. Um, this is a nice little fun bag here. What else is this? Oh, this is paper. Okay, good, didn't have my name on it. Yeah, so, yeah, this is going to be pretty interesting. Got a bunch of things of this nature. So these USBs here are going to be for that dongle thingy. Because I'm going to build mine in-house here first. Before I proceed. So I'm sticking all of my SMD components in this box right now. It's better for me. So I don't lose everything. Actually, the programmers also. I'm going to put them in here. Alright, let's move this to the side now. So, basically... Overall, that's what I got, and that's what's being planned right now. And um, I'm really loving this gimbal here. This is the uh, Tarot gimbal, or Taro, Taro gimbal. And it's really, really nice, actually. I'm really loving it, to be honest. It's easily programmable. There isn't much documentation. There isn't much documentation online, but once... Oh my goodness, shut the hell up. So I can set up the camera drone, because I also picked up that new frame. That's that $75 frame that came. It's, it's like a 550 millimeter quadcopter and I also have a hex copter that I still have right here below me which I am going to be installing uh setting up very soon actually I did pick up some 3s large lipos for it because it takes a 3s that one it was basically a kit but currently what I'm doing is I'm waiting for my 3d printer because I need to f uh, design design and 3d print something that'll hold this here on it because I don't have a payload area on that quadcopter so it's going to be pretty interesting and well that's it guys I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.